Hey guys, so this section is about inverse functions. We'll go ahead and start with the definition. So basically, we have, if we have a function and we put in a and we get out b, so f of a equals b, if this function has an inverse, then it's going to go g of b equals a. So in other words, here I'm putting in a value, and I'm putting in a and I'm getting out b. Here when I put in b, I get back a. So it's kind of the secret decoder ring uh, for the function. It's actually just everything's opposite. The x's and y's have swap places. Uh, Notation-wise, we say uh, the inverse of f of x is noted as, it's f, and then, I don't know if you can see this in the thing, so I'll write it a little bigger. It looks like a little exponent, negative 1x. And so it's not any kind of 1 over, it's not an exponent at all. It just reads f inverse x is all. Um, so, looking at a couple of examples here, this first one we're given f of negative 4 equals 7. So that means when x equals negative 4, what we think of as y equals 7. So if I have an inverse and I put in the 7, what I'll get out is the negative 4. Likewise, over here, x equals 3, y equals 9. So if I put the 9 into, um, and this was on the inverse, if I put the 9 into the inverse, I'm going to get the 3 back out because we're always going to get the opposites. Um, same idea, but from a table, and this is kind of going back to some of our regular function notation here. So f of 3 is just, we're given this one table for, here's x, here's um, f of x, and so if I'm evaluating it, f of 3, we go over when x is 3, f of x would be 1. This one is f of x equals 4, so that means the y value equals 4, and we're looking for x. So looking down this, looks like y is 4 when x would be 5. So this is the inverse, and on the homework they won't give you another table. So the idea is you're saying, so this is the x of the inverse, which would make it the y of the um, original function, and that means we're solving for the x, which would make it 2. Um, all of that kind of hurts my brain, so something I tend to do is just rewrite the table. Um, if this is the x's for the original function, it's the y's for the inverse function. Oops, 4, 5. If this is the y's for the original, it's the x's for the inverse. And so if you have a hard time, like I do, uh, getting your brain to do that, you can also just rewrite the table, and then it's just saying, hey, f inverse, which is this column of 5, makes 2. Likewise, here I can say when the answer of the inverse is 4, when the y is 4, the input had to have been 3. Okay, this one's fairly similar, except it's um, based on a graph rather than a table. So, we'll, based on the graph below, sketch f inverse x and evaluate the following. Okay, so let me get the graph sketched first. Uh, so what I can do is just basically use these points on the original line and then just flip them. So this one has 0, 1, so it's gonna, the inverse would have 1, 0. Uh, 2, 2 would be the same. Um, let's see, this has, right here, this has 4, 3, so this is going to have 3, 4. And then likewise with um, 6, 4, I'd have 4, 6. If I just kind of extend that line back this way, I'm going to get something like that. And the reason I have that dashed line drawn in there is to kind of show that if I folded the paper right over that dashed line, these graphs would sit right on top of each other. And that's a behavior you'll see between a function that's inverse. So let's see, for f of 4, that's our original function. So we go over where x is 4. It looks like the y would be 3. Um, f of x equals negative 2, so that's like y equals negative 2. So I go where in y is negative 2, um, x equals, it's right there, negative 6. And then for the next one, it's based on the blue line. So um, f inverse 4. So when the inverse is 4, it looks like the output, or when we put 4 into the inverse, the output is 6. And then when does the uh, inverse equal negative 4? So it looks to be down here at negative one. Okay, so now we're going to second half spend um, most of the rest of this finding the inverse algebraically. 
And for that, there's some particular steps. Uh, first thing we want to do is replace f of x with y, because it'll make it look easier. So for this equation, I'll write y equals 3x plus 7. And then um, I'm supposed to swap the x's and y's. So I go x equals 3y plus 7. And then solve that for y. And so this is going to be our process. Every time we're trying to find the inverse, we'll be given a function, asked to find the inverse. So we replace the f of x with the y, swap out the x's and y's. And then for the third step, I'm just solving for y. So I'm going to bring the 7 over to this side. x minus 7 makes 3y. And then divide both sides by 3. So if x minus 7 over 3 equals y. And that equals our f inverse x. So that would be um, our inverse function. Um, the other thing on this particular question to ask is to sketch a graph of the function and its inverse. Uh, the function itself is um, a little bit easier to graph, so I'm going to do that one first. So here I'll just do x, y, and when x is 0, y is 7, uh, much past that it's going to be off my graph, so I'm going to go back to negative 1. When x is negative 1, um, negative 3 plus 7 would be 4. If I wanted to go one more point, I could go negative 2, um, negative 6 plus 7, and that would be <coughs> um, 1. So if I go, when x is negative 2, y is 1. When x is negative 1, y is 4. And then my last one would be right there at 7. I get something that kind of looks like that. So there's my original. <coughs> And then for the inverse, I can just use that same table. I don't have to make a new one. I have to make a new one, but I can just use the same pair and just flip them. And if I want to do a little check, I can throw that in my equation here. 7 minus 7 would be 0 divided by 3 does make 0. Uh, 4 minus 7 would make negative 3 divided by 3, negative 1. And these should check in this equation. Um, and the reason I did this was just this equation wasn't that great to pick nice x's, so I didn't get out fractions. So I can go 7, 0, 4, negative 1, uh, 1, negative 2. So it's looking kind of like that. And you can see that same symmetry that if I folded these over, they'd sit right on top of each other. Okay, so then um, the rest of these are just algebraically finding the inverse. So we just have to remember some of our solve skills from intermediate algebra. So this is really y equals 7 plus cube root x. And I'll flip my, flip -flop my x's and y's. And then I just have to do what I got to do to get that y by itself. So I'll subtract the 7 over. And then remember to undo a cube root, we will um, cube both sides. So I'm going to go cube, cube. So then that means x minus 7 cubed equals y. So that would be my inverse. And no, no need to expand that out. Uh, for this one, I'll just skip straight to the, I'm going to call this side. So this is y, and I'm flipping it to x equals 5y to the 13th plus 7. So I'll scoot the 7 over. I'll divide both sides by 5. And then the trick to getting rid of the y to the 13th is to just take the 13th root, because if it was y squared, we'd square root both sides. So we just need the same root as we do power. And then we cancel those, and then what's left will be our inverse. So f inverse x equals 13th root x minus 7 over 5. Let's see, for this one we got y equals negative 2x plus 5 over 3x minus 7. So if I do the flip-flop thing, that's going to be x equals negative 2y plus 5 over uh, 3y minus 7. 
So the first thing I'll do is um, clear the fraction. So we'll multiply both sides by 3y minus 7. 3y minus 7. So on this side, I'll go ahead and distribute the x. That's going to make 3xy minus 7x equals those cancel. And I'm left with negative 2y plus 5. So the trick at this stage is to get your y's to one side and everything not involving y to the other. So I'm going to bring the 2y over here with this y. I'm going to bring the 7x over with the 5. So that will look like 3xy plus 2y equals adding that gets me 7x plus 5. And then I can factor y out. And that was the tricky step. Once I get the y out of there, then I can see I need to divide this stuff back over. So that'll be y equals, or f inverse x equals uh, 7x plus 5 over 3x plus 2. Okay, and these last two are um, questions about the domain. And we're supposed to find the inverse, and then what's the domain of the inverse? So here, if we do, um, let's see, we'll go x equals root 2y minus 5. So the first thing I would do is square both sides. And that's to undo the root. So it gives me x squared equals 2y minus 5. And then I can add the 5 over. And then divide the 2. So that would be my inverse. So if I'm just looking at the inverse, then the domain would be all real numbers. Um, except that we are saying it's the inverse of this function. And so we're limited by this function what the domain on this can be. So if we think about um, what this thing would look like, the original function up here, not the swapped one, um, where this is y, it'd be some version of a, um, of a root, because it's a square root. It's been shifted by um, 5, and then it, it's got a um, compression on it of 2, neither which is super important. Um, but the idea is that it has no up or down shift, and so what that's doing is telling me that the range of this one, so the range of my original function, is going to be from 0 to infinity. And the domain would be 5 halves to infinity, um, but not as pertinent as the range. And the reason is it's asking what's the domain of the inverse. Well, the domain of the inverse is the same thing as the range of the original. So the domain for this has to be limited to 0 to infinity. And that's because if you think of the graph, so this one would look kind of like that, which means the inverse one has to look kind of like that. I can't have graph where I don't have graph on this side. And then there's that symmetry again. So same idea down here. Um, I'll flip-flop the variables, so x equals 7y squared minus 3. Um, and then I can move the 3 over. And divide the 7. And then finally, you can root both sides. So f inverse x is the square root of x plus 3 over 7. So same thing. If I can figure out the range of my original, that's the domain of my inverse. So um, for this, I would have uh, a parabola has a big old stretch of 7 on it, but it's been shifted down 3. So the range of my original would be from negative 3 to infinity. So that means the domain of this function has to be from negative 3 to infinity. And if you check that, negative 3 plus 3 would be 0 divided by 7. Square root of 0 is as small as we could have gone. So that wraps up um, inverse functions.